Guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. Patera here with a quick video for you today. I want to talk about something important. I don't have my cameraman with me at the moment, so my camera is turned this way because it's easy for me to operate. So what we're going to talk about today is, I'm out in the barn, um, is home, Appalachian homesteading women. This actually is going to apply to um, any woman that homesteads. Okay. For those of you that do not homestead or that want to homestead or might be new at homesteading or whatever, I want to explain to you why true homesteading women are what they are, how they are, why they are that way, and why they are different than a lot of women that you see out in society. This isn't knocking a woman in any form or way in terms of whether she lives in a neighborhood, whether she's, a, whether she's got a job in terms of uh, a, you know, maybe a business, a stay-at-home mom, a homeschooling mom, whatever you are. I just want to explain why things are particularly the way that they are with women that I'm going to talk about. Okay. Homesteading women are simplistic, person number one. What do I mean by that? When I gave up suburban life, and not actually that's not even true. Before I actually even gave up suburban life and started switching to homesteading, meaning I was really fixated on learning skill sets, learning th how to do things like my great-great-grandmother did. Um, homeschooling my children also played a role into this. Growing a big garden. I don't mean a little tomato in a pot. I mean, I'm out there, lasagna gardening. You know, I did have, maybe have a tiller going. We're talking compost. We're talking, you know, driving to a farm somewhere to get manure because I didn't have it at my own home. I'm talking even in a an urban setting when we really tried to start doing these things. Self-defense, canning, bread making, candle making, um, just really diving in. My life had to change. If you think back in your mind about things and the way things were in terms of maybe how your memo had it. Your great, really honestly for most of us now, it's your great, great grandmother. If you're talking about, for folks in my generation, middle-aged folks, if you're talking about your Nana, you know, you're probably talking about post-depression babies. I'm talking about prior to that. Most women after the, you know, the 40s, a lot of them had to get a job, okay? They got, they worked for different reasons. But I'm talking about true, hardcore pioneering women. Think about how their house was. Think about how their dress was. And I have an example of that with my great-great-grandmother. The woman was super simple, okay? Even with, in her very, very old age, okay? 70s, 80s, pushing her 90s. The woman still was extremely simple in terms of what she wore, how she dressed, if she fixed her hair, okay? If she put her teeth in, um, you know, but because the, the woman was fixated on her skills. She was not fixated on, well, what did her kitchen look like, okay? Real true homesteading women, while in, in a modern day era, while we love beautiful things, I love antiques. Okay, I love carnival glass and antique lady heads and antique pieces and beautiful things. I love all of these things. A lot of them are a stretch for these people, these women financially. But the bottom line is, I hate to tell you, <laughs> they're going to tell you, I am not really concerned about if my kitchen is exactly cleaned like it needs to be today. If my kids are happy and my dishes are clean and my cow has been properly milked and sanitized and my barn chores are caught up and my schooling is done with my children and my laundry's caught up, I just really don't care if my kitchen is going to impress you in terms of how it's set up. Okay? I had this brand new beautiful baker's rack. Okay? Gorgeous. It's beautiful. I've got a cow down here. Hi. Um... And I, when we brought it in the house, the first thing that I went to is I went, would some china not be gorgeous on that? And then all of a sudden, reality slaps me upside the head and says, really? Now, think about this, Patera. 
you get how many dozen eggs a day, and you have how much cast iron, and where are you going to put your Bible, and where all of these things that are important in terms of my daily life and are important in terms of what I read, what I manage, what I collect, what I cook with, what I use, what we have to use is what my kitchen is used for. It doesn't have the latest gadgets. Well, I do have a KitchenAid, but I'm not really using it a whole lot. She's pretty. That's my most decorative item in my kitchen. That was my Christmas present last year because um, I'm making all my breads by hand now. But my point is, I'm not worried about whether you see Pyrex hanging up all over my wall. I'm not worried about if I still have 1982 country blue wallpaper. My house and my home and my homestead and my kitchen is about function. That's what I'm talking about. You're seeing me with no makeup on. I put a little, a little I did a little gloss for you, okay? I'm not really concerned if you're seeing with me with makeup. Why? Because as soon as I click this button right off, I've got to go clean these stalls back here. And I'm going to get gross. And I ain't worried about it. True homesteading women do not have the time to worry about impressing someone else with these types of things. If I'm going to impress you, I'm going to impress you with the fact that I just milked two gallons of milk out of that cow standing three feet from me right there. Or that, you know, my children are doing excellent at homeschooling. If I'm filming a video for you, I'm not concerned whether my camera is turned this way, this way, or this way. I have things to do. All of the homesteading women that I know, tr I mean the women that are really doing it, I don't mean writing stuff. I mean they are doing it. And you will know them by their fruits. You will Some of them you won't know because they're not on social media. They don't have time for this stuff. Okay? So the minutia simply does not matter. Okay? So when you are paying attention to social media and the ones that are putting themselves out there, look for their skill sets. Look and see what they're really, truly doing. Okay, so that, that is one important thing that I just absolutely want to impress upon somebody because a lot of these women are not willing to put themselves out there because there's criticism that comes with it. Because we're not filming the right way. Because we don't have mascara on. Because my sloggers don't match my shirts. Or because I'm not wearing the, the newest fashion in Duluth fashion. All of these things are wonderful, but that's not w what we do. That's not why we're doing what we're doing. And that's not why we're sharing it with you. We're not trying to impress you. We're trying to share with you, and we're trying to teach you. When you get around these women, that's what you're going to notice first, is all of that minutia goes away. I'm going to talk about non-GMO foods, and I'm going to show you my gardens. But I'm going to tell you what. Tonight, when I make chili for my husband, and we're, we're going to have for, uh, Petros or Frito Banditos, I bought GMO chips today. I did. Why? Because I live out in the middle of nowhere. And today, I had to milk my cow in the rain. Well, she came in from the rain. I had to clean her up, milk my cow, get my children up. I did three loads of laundry. I cleaned my kitchen. I've got a batch of apple butter going. I had to go to the co-op and spend X amount of dollars on feed, bring that up, delay my hay delivery because of the rain. Then I had to load in the car, go 30 miles to a town, and I'm sorry my option was Walmart. I bought GMO chips today. That's what I did. I'm sorry. But this is my life, and, you know, you have to make decisions on the big picture. I'm not going to – these women that, I, that I'm that i speaking of, some of them you've seen on Facebook, my Facebook. Some of them will be speaking at the conference that we're having in April. Some of them you'll never know. But I can tell you what, right now, they're busy, and they live a simple life, and they have to make decisions based upon what's working at the moment. So when I'm out in the mud <laughs> – and I'm, I just fed a hundred chickens, and I've got to feed my pigs, and I've got to come back in to collect my eggs, and I've got two children doing homeschool inside. I'm not worried whether my camera is turned the correct way. I'm delivering a message, and if that's what's important to you, then that's what will matter. The next thing I want to talk about, which I think I just hit upon this, <clears throat> True homesteading women are extremely direct. We might act sweet and bless your heart 
and blink our eyes because we don't want to get into it with you. But I'm going to tell you what. I can name four or five women off the top of my head, and some of these names you're going to know real well. I would not cross these women if I were you. What I mean is by that also is, is when they are working with you, if you go to a farm, if you came up here to work with me, I'm probably not going to be the same person you see here. Well, you are now. Let me tell you why. You could flat out get killed in this environment. I don't care if you call that smoke or not. I'm telling you right now. When I am letting this cow in that's right here, and she's running past me to come into this stall right here, and I've told you to do A, B, and C, you better have done it because somebody's going to get hurt in the process. This type of direct communication is what you see on a farm, and it just carries over. Yes, you tell it, girl. And it carries over into our lives in general. We don't have time for that. You don't have time for the fluff. It's a tough lifestyle. These women are tough, okay? They're throwing hay bales. They're chopping wood. They're going out and harvesting food. They're dealing with lots of children. We're not going to sweet talk you. <laughs> we're just not going to. It's not that we don't love you, and it's not that we're trying to be ugly, and it's not like we're trying to be, you know, these big power trips, but I'm talking about these women that I know of past, present, and definitely in the future, they have to be tough. That doesn't mean ugly. Let me, let me make this point very valid. That doesn't mean ugly. That doesn't mean passive-aggressive. That doesn't mean I'm going to one-up you. That means you're going to get what you get. Okay, it's going to be, and, you know, you have to get used to that mentality. That mentality was uh, is something that I had to get used to also because, you know, a lot of times as a new homesteader and as a newbie in this environment, you think these people are direct and bold and because they don't like you or because they're being forceful. No, that's just the way they are. Homesteading and farming and ag is a hard life. And you have to take the bull by the horn to manage it and to make it happen. No one else is going to do it for you. The next and last and best thing that I want to um, state about homesteading women is I'm going to tell you what. And I have found this out and I hold this as a badge of honor. If these homesteading women, I'm not talking, guys, I'm leaving you out. I love you, but I'm leaving you out. Women are different. We have a different vibe with each other. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to tell you right now that if the, if you have women that you know that are, I mean, that I'm talking about that fit this type of description and they take you in and love you like their own kid, you are something special. These women do not have time to waste on people that they just honestly cannot teach and enjoy being around. It doesn't mean that they wish bad things on you. But what I'm saying is, if they take you in and they try to teach you and help you, share things with you, um, share things with about them to you, that is a blessing that I can't even begin to describe to you. It's, way, it's that way with farmers in general. All, I'm talking about old true homesteaders. Because they have, they they've got a focus. They don't have time for the minutiae. It goes back to that simple, that complex yet simple lifestyle. They've got to be very focused. It's very easy to even up here trying to homestead. It is very easy to get sucked into things on the outside world. Social media does that to us. Watching television does that to us. A lot of these folks don't don't plug into that simply because they don't have time. But if they plug into you and they're teaching you how to make their biscuits, and they're inviting you to their homestead, and you walk into someone's kitchen that's just full of cast iron and soaps and spices and all the things that they're doing, I'm talking about these types of women. I'm not talking about the ones that have the carnival glass and the copper molds on the wall. I'm talking about real deal stuff. And they've brought you to their house, and they're going to teach you how to, I don't know, Harvest something, butcher something, raise something, make candles, make soaps, teach you how to make bread. 
That is a friendship that is beyond honoring. That is something that you need to uphold close to your heart. And if you have someone that's doing that for you, around you, or with you, or even through social media, I'm telling you, you're a, that's a very special place to be. I hope this helps somebody out today. Um, a little fired up about it. But I think that this needs to be explained. See? I'm holding my camera like this because I need to get this video done because look. See her? Right? See this baby right here? I've got a schedule to keep. I'm not taking my kid off of his English lesson and telling my husband, who is so sweet, to stop watching his football game to help me out with the dishes for a few minutes when I've got all this to do out here. So, homesteading women. Hold them up high. You will know them by their fruits, and you will know them because, again, they're going to be there for you. I hope this helps you out. If you like what you see here, be sure to subscribe to here to us here at Appalachia's Homestead. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram. We've got a conference coming up in April. It's going to knock your socks off. I hope you all can make it out to Crossville, Tennessee. We've got a lineup continuing to build. We plan to sell tickets sometime maybe starting in January. We're, we're trying to take it in a little bit of stride because we're just so excited. And things are lining up. So we'll talk to you all soon. And uh, you all take care out there. i got to feed her.